we shall begin the premise Okay. When? You don't mind starting with our devotions? shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, by the Lord that he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord, for the Lord upholdeth him with his left hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lavish his seed, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And we'll conclude with the chorus of the marching to Zion. We are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. So we certainly are happy to have everyone here for the um, International Health Commission um, meeting here at the General Board on Tuesday, June the 25th, 2019. And we certainly were awaiting Bishop Seawright, our commission chair, to come and officially call us to order, but we do know that he is also the host of this event, so we do give him grace as um, he, uh, I'm certainly, I'm sure he is on his way. So while I'm still standing, again, I would like to give you greetings. Um, as the executive director of the International Health Commission, I'm happy to serve um, in this part of the vineyard. Um, working hard to make sure that we all give glory to God and grateful to each and every one of you for your service unto the Lord. Grateful to your sacrifice for many times as we know those of us who work in the Health Commission, um, you make great sacrifices in all that you do and your time and your talents and your gifts and of course your finances. So again, we're grateful to all of you. Um, to those who have gone before us as uh, our exhorter Gwen Williams has lifted up our devotions. We're so happy for her service over the many, many years and the foundations that she has laid. And then of course, to our medical um, director, um, Reverend Dr. Miriam Burnett for all that she continues to do. And then of course, then to Joy and Jeremy. Thank you so much for your service um, to the International Health Commission. At this time, uh, we'll have Reverend Dr. Burnett bring her greetings. Ditto. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, so Joy will have the uh, roll call. I, I just want to get down again. Okay. All right. Um, you can do it at the end. Okay. All righty. That that's fine. Okay. Um, looks like and next would be on the agenda acknowledgement of guests. We're sure others will be on their way as we're trying to make it through all of these different meetings that are happening. Um, we'll next have the approval of the 2018 general board minutes. We have to read the minutes first, correct? <laughs> okay, so Joyce uh, is going to read our minutes. All right, these are the minutes from in, a, in Atlanta mm -hmm. on June 26th through the 28th in 2018. Um, the meeting was called to order at around the same time as this time. Um, devotion was done by Sister Williams. Um, Bishop Reverend Meacham and Reverend Burnett gave their Greetings. We discuss the um, academic course offerings at ITC and PTS. We discuss the website, social media at www.amechurchhealth.org. Okay. We talked about the wellness program that it, we are offering for text for wellness which is um, a free um, health messaging, messaging campaign and the partner with Chess LLC. Um, we are working with them to um, deliver um, appropriate information and motivational me um, messages to our members and churches. We also discuss um, HIV and AIDS and that campaign and um, support a world's AIDS day on December 1st and um, other national days of recommendation, uh, recognition for National Black HIV AIDS Day, which is in February, and a week of prayer for healing of AIDS during the second week of March. We discussed um, what was added to our website, the climate change, sustainability, and green jobs, which um, provided um, a Go Green launching, a Learn, Act, and Adapt program, and the solar energy initiative that we are um, still promoting. We have, um, we discussed the caregivers, spiritual health, nutrition, and exercise, as well as mental health. Um, one of the big ones we discussed, um, we focused on was ministry to those who are differently abled. We discussed the terminology of that and um, how we were going to continue to push with the co um, consultation of students. I'm reading fast. Sorry, guys. Then we talked about clergy and family health, communicable diseases and immunizations, chronic diseases, and we listed some practices on how we could address those issues, collaborations with the other connectional organizations and their agendas. We discussed death, dying, and hospice, disaster preparedness and response. We also talked about with our new um, supplies that were given by FEMA and the DHS Center for Faith and Opportunity Initiatives, Substance Abuse, Addiction and Recovery, Monthly Awareness Calendars of National Health Observances. Uh, one of those days is May for National Mental Health Awareness, June Men Health Month, um, Finn again in July is Faith-Based Health Wellness, Nutrition and Fitness Month. Lastly, we discussed our awards that were given to Bishop Seawright, as well as Reverend Meacham and Reverend Burnett. And we gave eight recommendations that we presented to the general board. And those are the minutes from, summed up from the last meeting. So can we have a motion to approve the minutes as read? I move for the adoption of the minutes. Is there a second? 
Okay, it's been properly moved and second. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Alrighty. So next on our agenda, reports and updates for commission committees. Um, I think that the report, does anybody have a copy of this? Or just no, doesn't? Okay. All right. So um, many of the updates is um, included in this uh, report, seven page or eight page report that I have in my hand. Um, if anybody additionally wants one, I will read basically the um, beginning portion of it, which will also serve as the report of the executive director. Um, so it is with pleasure, great pleasure, that we provide this summary of work of the International Health Commission of the AME Church. We would first like to express our gratitude for the support of our chairman, Bishop Harry Seawright. The International Health Commission promoted and hosted a variety of wellness activities, events, and programs, and planning at all levels of the connection. Collaboration and partnerships continue with the following organization. Ruby, the world's largest online culinary nutrition course, the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, the American Cancer Society, Prostate Health Network, Girl Track, which is a work walking program for women of all ages, the American Red Cross, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the C and the CDC, all of these are in continue. Partnerships with other AME departments and commissions such as Social Action Commission, we promote environment, environmental wellness and solar energy. The AME Health Monitor Magazine partnership discussion started and we look forward to the 2019 edition. A new partnership with the Alzheimer's Association is in place and, is, and will be presented at this general board. During the 2019 Global Development Council, at the GDC, divisions of the International Health Commission was reestablished. After meeting with the Reverend Dr. Reverend Dr. Miriam Burnett, Lisa Williamson, and Anne Marie Posey Bensey, members of the Health Ministry of the Episcopal Districts 14 through 20, presiding elder Collins Kaba, was elected the GDC Health Director. Subsequently, he has begun the, pro the process of reorganizing and moving forward the International Health Commission. Due to the efforts of our chairman, Bishop Harry L. Seawright, a partnership with the Alzheimer's Association will be launched at this meeting, which we are attending now. The partnership is designed to increase concern about Alzheimer's disease and raise awareness of the association and its mission. In addition to raising awareness, our collective goal is to, is to connect African-American community, communities with care and support services, research and advocacy updates, while educating individuals about the risks of Alzheimer's disease, benefits of healthy living, and the reduction of health dis disparities and provide opportunities for community engagement. Several of our local churches hosted Men Walking for Wellness programs 10 churches participated in the American Heart Association Healthy Life Project. Churches continue to participate in prostate cancer health Father's Day rallies, symposiums, and disaster preparedness. The 9th Episcopal District hosted a FEN, prostate cancer awareness play, and several health, wellness, health awareness events in the presiding elder district. The 10th Episcopal District hosted events in partnership with the American Heart, the American Cancer, and Red Cross. Several Episcopal Districts, presiding elders districts, and local churches still do not have, however, appointed health directors, and this is a great concern because almost every, almost every preventable disease condition, which includes the diabetes type two, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and some cancers, uh, we find that people of color rank the highest suffering and dying from these preventable diseases. So it's important that all of our Episcopal districts appoint a health director. Monthly conference calls are held with the executive director the last Friday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Health Commission submits our articles frequently to the Christian to the Christian Recorder. As a reminder, included in le legislation passed at the 50th General Conference are two questions that were added to the annual conference recording. One, does your church or charge have an active health ministry? Two, did your church or charge engage in ministry or wellness events towards eliminating and addressing congregation or community needs associated with HIV AIDS pandemic? And additionally, the following legislation was also passed as the 50th 
at the 50th General Conference requiring HIV AIDS training for all leadership. The goal is to assure that the AME Church leadership is equipped, knowledgeable, and confident to engage accurately about HIV and AIDS. Clergy at all levels and appointed and elective officers shall be required to obtain a basic scientific foundation to understand HIV and AIDS. This can be, this can be summarized as what effective religious leaders should know about HIV and AIDS. We also, jumping down, for those of you who are following along on the um, report, I'm going to jump down. We also have the sickle cell um, warrior supplies packet, packets. The partnership that gathered the supplies were initiated by Isaiah Huff, an 11-year-old sickle cell um, person who was a member of the YPD at New Bethel AME Church in Willowgrove, PA. Isaiah started Isaiah Inspired several years ago in an effort to provide education and awareness about sickle cell disease to provide supplies and gifts for sickle cell warriors. In December 2018, he was watching a video about sickle cell in Africa and decided he wanted to do something for them. After speaking with his mother, Shauna Huff, Dr. Burnett, our very own Dr. Burnett, um, launched um, a program with the YPD and three other churches, New Bethel AME Church in Willowgrove, PA, Jones Tabernacle AME Church in Philadelphia, and Union AME Church in Warwick, New, New York. After hearing about the program, several other entities joined us. The International Health Commission, the Philadelphia Conference Branch WMS, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Sickle Cell Division, and the Philadelphia Delaware Valley Sickle Cell Association. We are pleased to note that we have decided to make this a long-term program. The partnership continues to grow as we anticipate greater things through God's help. At the Global Development Council in February of 2019, three suitcases filled with supplies were delivered to the 17th and 20th Episcopal District. A second set will be delivered to the 14th and 20th Episcopal District during the WMS Quadrennial. And this is an ongoing partnership with further de deliveries being, will be made in the future. I'm going to allow Dr. Burnett to talk more about the academic courses and offerings um, at ITC um, in just a little bit. Uh, jumping down to uh, additional information that I would be talking about later, but I'll talk about now. We want to continue to em emphasize, as we mentioned earlier, our Culinary Rx program. Just to remind you, we do have flyers available here at the general board here in Birmingham, Alabama. And what's important about this is that the price has been reduced. Uh, when we first introduced the uh, Culinary Rx program, which is, which is a faith-based uh, nutrition, wellness program, teaching everyone about how to prevent a variety of diseases and teaches you how to cook healthy. When we first introduced, the cost was um, $199.99. Now it is only $49.99 and it's a lifetime um, program. So once you enroll one time for $49.99, you enroll for life. You can access this website anytime you want. It's a wonderful thing that you can combine with Bible studies that you can also offer to the leadership of your church, your clergy, your WMMS, your lay. All the organizations can come together, gather around this program in order to make sure that we are encouraging our church to be healthy. As I said, um, it is a cooking and nutrition course to improve health and to fight disease and as a wealth of information. And we are so grateful to Bishop C. Wright, uh, Reverend Dr. Marion Burnett, and the other face that some of you may see on our flyer is Dr. Scott Stoll, who is the um, inventor and creator of this program, also a Christian, and um, we are happy to have this partnership, ongoing partnership going on. Um, later in our, um, in um, the document that you have before you, we are revamping or starting up again, as was mentioned earlier, our partnership with Health Monitor Magazine. Um, a wonderful partnership, they called us. Um, they'll be focusing on uh, multiple sclerosis as well as we're looking forward to them um, helping us to address other issues. But the first issue, health issue that will come out will be on multiple sclerosis. So we're looking forward to that issue coming out, getting out to all of our churches. And we're looking forward to when we reach out to those of you who have articles that you would like to submit, 
um, around this topic. Uh, we will get that word out to you so that you can submit those information, that information to us and be included in the Health Monitor magazine. And we're so happy again to continue that partnership with them. Amen? Amen. As you continue down in your document, you will see, as you know, we have several different ministries. So in our document, caregivers, we continue um, to make sure that there's information being provided on AABChealth.org regarding support for caregivers in our community, making sure that they have um, resources, a database, um, information on uh, advanced directives, um, respite care, and end of life. In the area of chronic disease, we continue to encourage the church to become aware and then act on those behaviors that will lead to prevention and control of chronic diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and arthritis. I just talked about our Health Monitor magazine, and we look forward to the first article on guiding living with multiple sclerosis, as well as, as addressing at some time also cancers, metabolic diseases, and sickle cell. Clergy and Family Health, August is our annual Clergy and Family Health Wellness Month. Uh, clergy experience burnout and stress, and self-care is imperative during this time in our history where the Bible records um, a great falling away. And even though there's a great falling away of people no longer coming to church or making it a priority, a priority as it has been in the past, uh, we understand that church growth is, a, is in a priority, and therefore there's a struggle due to gentrification in the surrounding areas of many of our churches, and this adds to the stress for many of our clergy. While we continue to reach the loss and grow the church, uh, we want to help our church, we want to help our um, clergy avoid the weariness, depression that might come with it, and loss of hope. So we hope that everyone will support our annual August Clergy and um, Clergy Family um, Wellness Month. In the area of climate change and sustainability and green jobs, at some, at later on, um, before we close, James Wilson will certainly come forward, but at aabhealth.org, we offer information on AAB Solar Energy Initiative um, and Going Green. Communicable disease and immunization. We provide information on immunization. We provide information and updates on communicable diseases on our website. Um, Reverend Dr. Burnett continues to provide information on any Ebola um, outbreaks, um, and she continues her partnership to represent us at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, again, as we said, we recommend information and we provide information regarding immunization to protect every, every child through immunization. And we realize that measles and whooping cough and other preventable diseases are on the rise, so we encourage our members to be informed about vaccines. Um, collaborations with other connectional agendas. Again, as we've mentioned, we partner and we are part of the Christian Education Department, and we're very happy again that the Reverends Miriam Dr. Burnett, Lisa, Williams, um, Lisa Williamson, Anne Marie Bensi Addison Posey, and Melissa Brown pre uh, presented workshops at the Ubuntu, did I say that right, everybody? Ubuntu uh, <laughs> African and the Learning Labs was a panel that offered realistic and holistic analysis of global maternal child health, infectious disease, disaster preparedness, with an emphasis on strategic planning and prevention and management of strategies and action planning. Also, we were present at the Connectional Women in Ministry, where the reverends that I've already mentioned, they also presented mini, uh, workshops at the Connectional Women in Ministry um, in 2019 um, in South Africa. These presentations included caring for the women in ministry, and I'm sorry, I want to read it again, care of the ministering women and self-care for women in ministry. Um, we also partnered with SADA, Service and Devel Development Agency. We partnered to address global health and disaster concerns through educational and financial and resource collaborations. Social action partnership. The main efforts surrounded around collaborative, supportive efforts to support environmental wellness and solar energy. With the WMS and YBT YPD, we continue to support Let's Move and Girl Track. And of course, we know that now our first aid stations are known as wellness stations. We do continue to um, provide services for those who are certainly in need of, and regarding medical emergencies, but our wellness stations um, provided at the general board, 
the connectional, the Episcopal district, and <coughs> residing elder district. The wellness stations offer more than more than first state, wellness stations offer information on prevention and how to stay well at our major meetings. In the area of death, dying, and hospice, we continue to offer information, again, on, on abchealth.org, recommending, again, that all churches offer workshops on death, dying, and hospice care, and uh, further information can be found on our website. Uh, Reverend Dr. Burnett will come and talk more about disaster preparedness and response. So moving down to HIV and AIDS, I've already shared with you that we continue to, to participate in offering information about that and supporting and making sure that our clergy are aware that the discipline requires us to have that education. But we also do um, lift up the um, National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day, which takes place on February the 7th, and the Week of Prayer for the Healing of, H of, of AIDS um, held during the second week of March. Um, mental health, we support and offer referral resources, again, on aabchealth.org, our, well, our website, and on our health calendar. There's a variety of resources that you can access um, from all the organizations that we partnership, both local and on the governmental level, uh, SAMHSA being one of them, or S-A-M-H-A-S um, being one of them, and also information on Alzheimer's disease, uh, we offer that for you. Ministry to those who are disabled. The committee, led by the Reverend Miriam Dr. Creighton, attends a, attended the conference on this topic. She continues to keep us abreast of how we can make sure that our churches are providing information to those who are differently challenged and making sure that we offer inclusive opportunities for them. We have our monthly wellness calendar on amechealth.org that's updated for you, which offers you um, the different highlights for each month, May being Mental Health Month, June being Men's Health Month, of course, uh, FEN, participating in the FEN projects um, that they have around men's health. July is our annual Faith-Based Health, Wellness, Nutrition, and Fitness Month. And again, as I mentioned earlier, August is our annual clergy and clergy family wellness month. In the area of nutrition and exercise, again, on abchealth.org, you'll find information about um, men walking for wellness, um, our girl trek walking, and of course, culinary RX, which I've already presented. Spiritual health, we encourage and recommend that provisions be made for spiritual support and referrals for counseling to members of the congregation as requested. We encourage moments of meditation and rest during, me during meetings. Members of the Spiritual Health Committee must be certified counselors, psychologists, and social workers, or human, human service workers, both clergy and lay. And if you meet one of these requirements and wish to participate, we, we ask that you send an email to chcabchealth at gmail.com so that we can get you on the registry. Substance and Abuse and Addiction, the website abchealth.org offers resources regarding substance abuse, addiction, and recovery. And then, we've been talking a lot about our website. We invite everyone to continue to visit it. Um, our website, abchealth.org, which is a one-stop preventative health, wellness, nutrition, and disaster preparedness resource, providing a wealth of information on a variety of topics, um, which we've mentioned already, sickle cell research, solar energy, um, end-of-life planning, active shooter guid guidance, walking for health, um, just a wealth of information. Plus, we have a video gallery. The video gallery offers, again, a wealth of information for a variety of health topics, as well as many of our um, directors um, offer um, articles and information that can be read and shared with congregation. Our Twitter account is linked to our website and our Facebook page. The following recommendations, should we read that at this time or we come to the end? Should we read the recommendations now or later? Wait, wait to the end. We'll wait to the end for recommendations. So that concludes um, our report submitted um, at this general board. At this time, um, we will have, before we have our medical director come up and address the topics that she will address, we're going to invite James. No? no. Wrong person? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to ask a question. Yes. Cell. Yes. Um, the warrior, where is that, the, like the list of whatever's in the warrior packet or 
I can give it to you. I forgot to add that. We can add that actually. Okay, so the question was what is included in the sickle cell warrior packet? And the Reverend Dr. Burnett is a direct contact for that so she can provide information on that. Uh, in the packet, and, and I'll, I'll post this, is um, thermometers, the uh, heat packs that are, can be, uh, you know, the ones we use in the hospital. <laughs> uh, heat packs, um, the other thing that works well for them are the heat packs that you can put in your, in your, in your shoes and in your, in your gloves. Um, blankets, um, hand sanitizer, uh, coloring books and journals, as well as pens and pencils and crayons for entertainment purposes. Um, is it the moment? I feel like I'm missing something, but it, let me look. I would also like to let you know, um, I won't give the um, exact amounts because um, our uh, session here is being recorded live, but we did submit um, our financial report. We do have our financial report in place. And um, again, at this time, I'm not gonna give out all the numbers again because we're being recorded live, but the, it is in place. I do have it here in hand. So we do have the um, <coughs> banking statement. We do have the balance in place here which Joy and Jeremy and Bishop C. Wright can take a look at, amen? So I just wanna let you know that the financial statement is in place. Um, at this time, James, we'll have you come forward. Okay. Okay. James is our webmaster. Um, he's our expert um, for our solar energy, for our go green and environmental ministry. Hello and everyone, amen. Um, Brother James Wilson. Basically, do the AMC Health on our website. I want to make sure that everybody understands where everything goes. If they need information for me, I'm available. My email is jwilson at chess llc.com. Um, basically, we have a program for sustainability, uh, environmental health. Uh, people don't really understand the connection between climate change and health. Dr. Burnett is an expert in that category when it talks about things like asthma, COPD. So we need to get the word out there for that information. Plus, in the last uh, quadrennial, 2016, Amy Church probably was the only, I know African American denomination that acknowledged climate change. Yes. So it was the only denomination. So that's a historical thing. Every time I talk to my groups like Sierra Club and everything else, they're amazed that one a faith-based group acknowledged climate change, but African American is even more. So we need to get the word out. But again, I'm available for anybody for that. Um, I'm going to leave it. Thank you so much, James. Uh, and before I give it to Reverend Dr. Burnett, we also want to let you know uh, we have the Faith RX cards. Um, the Faith RX cards are medication savings program cards. We have more than enough here at the general board. We 